Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the Wolther LGU Vironment Underlever Springer on test. But before that, I'm out on a hunting session targeting rabbits and grey squirrels. Right, we've got a lovely day and I'm planning a double barreled session. I want to try for some rabbits, but it's still a bit early in the day for them, so I thought we'd have a crack at some squirrels first. With that in mind, I've come across some woods with a feeding station I want to check up on, so let's have a look at that first. I've given the squirrels and this block of woodland a real hammering over the last couple of years, but it's almost impossible to stop them from filtering back in from the surrounding countryside. Recent sightings would suggest that they've done just that, so it's time for another go at them. I'm travelling fairly light today as the main purpose of the visit is reconnaissance. If the squirrels are back on the feeding station, I may well come back and set up a hide to give me more concealment during future sessions. But for today, I'll be making do with natural cover. Right, the feeding station that I can cover down in this gully produced a heck of a lot of squirrels back at the start of the spring but as is very often the case the action really dried up after a few visits. However the landowner here has kept it topped up with grain and he actually contacted me last week to say that he'd seen a, a squirrel on the feeder. Now if he's seen one squirrel the chances are there are probably more here so I reckon it's just worth spending some time here today. You'll see I don't actually have a hide here now that's because I took that down after the initial campaign but to be honest when squirrels are homing in on a feeding station like this, they tend to be pretty confident. Also, I've put us on the shady side of this valley, so there's, we're covered by the shade anyway, and also I've tucked myself in as closely as I can to natural cover, so once I've got my head net on, I should be pretty well concealed. A head net is a seriously underrated element of concealment. By helping to keep your face hidden, it greatly improves your chances of blending into the countryside and going undetected. The early summer woods are alive with wildlife today, but they're also thick with green foliage, which makes it very tricky to spot anything up in the treetops. I'm relying on the feeding station to draw squirrels out into the open where I can see them. There's one on the feeder. Well, I didn't even see that one come in. I was looking around up in the treetops, looked back down at the feeder and there it was in the feed tray. It looked like quite a young squirrel, but it was a really good solid smack to the head. Killed it very quickly, so cleanly in fact that it's expired right in the feed tray. Now, I'm not going to go causing a load of disturbance crashing on down there just to retrieve it from the feeder. So we'll leave it there and see what happens. If you bag one young squirrel, it's very likely that there will be others from the same litter in the vicinity. That means it's well worth me sticking around to see if there are any others about. 
It's a longer wait this time, but we eventually get another taker. Well, that one did not seem very impressed with the dead squirrel. It clearly wanted to come to the feeder. It looked like it was coming all the way down. Sported the dead one, spooked a little bit, started going back up the tree. But before it got very far, it turned around, started to come back down and froze. That gave me the perfect opportunity to line up for that headshot and whack it down. Now, that's two squirrels, which really does imply that they have moved back into this area. I sit it out for another hour after the second squirrel, but with nothing happening, I decide that it's time to move on to the second stage of the day's hunting. Right, it's been quiet here for quite some time now, so I think we'll move on and have a go at those rabbits once I've picked up these shot squirrels. Now, the fact that we have had two does suggest to me that squirrels have moved back into the vicinity. so. I will be back here soon for another go at them, just to keep the pressure on and hopefully just to keep those numbers pushed down at a relatively sensible level. Right, on to those rabbits. Okay, I'm out on the rabbiting permission and what we have here is a, a lot of fields that have recently been cut for silage. Now, because the grass is that much shorter, it's going to be a lot easier to spot the rabbits than it was a couple of weeks ago. And in fact, we think we've already spotted one out feeding in the far distance. So we're gonna start off with a bit of a stalk around, see what we can find, and then maybe settle in for an ambush if we come across a promising looking area. It's a lovely evening, but conditions aren't ideal for stalking. With next to no wind, there's very little ambient noise to mask the sound of my approach. All I can do is plod on and try to move as stealthily as I can. Right, there are a few rabbits out feeding up ahead. They're well out of range, especially given the complication of the fact that I want to try and get it on scope cam, so I'm going to try and creep in a little bit closer, hopefully get a shot. Having a cameraman in tow doubles the amount of disturbance, making what's already a tricky task even harder. But we're closing in and our chances of getting a shot look fairly promising. Assisted by the fact that the last few metres of the stalk are in the shade, we eventually get close enough for a comfortable shot. And one of the rabbits is still out. All I need to do now is get myself set up and recording without spooking the remaining bunny. There's one in the bag. There were quite a few out initially. Most of them spooked as we were trying to creep within range. One of them lingered. And I've managed to smack it over with a very clean headshot. Now, I'm not gonna go stomping straight over that warren and risk spooking any remaining rabbits further. What I'm going to do is tuck myself into the cover here, sit it out for a while, and hope that some of those rabbits come back out, maybe offer me one or two other shots.
Whether shooting in woods or fields, sitting and waiting like this is about the most effective approach I use. It cuts out all the disturbance of trying to stalk within range and means I can take steady sitting shots with the support of the sticks. I don't like to wear a head net when I'm stalking as it restricts my view too much, but I usually always put one on for an ambush like this. Well, as I explained, several rabbits ran in while I was stalking in on that last one. So I've decided to settle in here. Now, the reason I've picked this spot is firstly, puts me sort of 30, 35 metres away from the burrow that the rabbits ran to. And also, although most of this field's been cut very short, this corner, they haven't got quite got in here. So there's still some nice long grass that gives me a bit of cover. Also, it's just about in the shade, which again, should just help with my concealment. So now just hopefully we'll get a chance to put it to use and the rabbits will come back out. You do need to be patient to make these tactics work, but it's a pleasant enough way to while away an hour or so. And when it goes to plan, your patience should be rewarded with a shot or two. was very very close to where I shot the first one certainly seemed like it had clocked us because it came out and immediately sat bolt upright but that meant that it offered me a very clear static target and made that headshot head shot very straightforward I'm just going to sit it out for a little while longer now see if we can't get another chance Well, we've given it plenty of time since that second rabbit, but there really hasn't been anything more happening. So we're gonna wrap it up now. And what I'm going to do is move on, maybe find another warrant to target. And if that produces the goods, we may well show that in another episode. But as far as it's gone so far today, we've had this brace of rabbits, plus the two squirrels from earlier on, all of which are destined for the pot. So, so far, it's been a very productive day. A decent day on the squirrels and rabbits there. And now, it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. It turns out that Basque and the RSPCA are in agreement on airgun crime. After hosting a conference on reducing crime last month, the two organisations have now formed a working group and are jointly producing a report for the government. And though the two don't always see eye to eye, in this case, the RSPCA has conceded that better enforcement is the way forward when it comes to reducing air gun misuse. Basque Chairman Peter Glenzer reminded lawmakers that the prospect of air gun licensing in England could break a system that is already struggling to cope. Want to get active? Go shooting! That's what Basque has told a government inquiry into the social impact of participation in culture and sport. The UK's largest shooting association told politicians that shooting can get more people active reduce social isolation and promote personal well-being while encouraging engagement with the natural environment. 
and it recommended that regional centres of excellence for the shooting sports be set up across the UK. The online abuse of shooters is in the spotlight once again after the chairman of Scottish Natural Heritage received death threats. Mike Cantlay was threatened after he allowed a trial cull of ravens to go ahead in a bid to boost wader populations. Chris Packham was at the head of a public campaign that preceded the threats. A Countryside Alliance spokesperson said that something very dark was going on at the heart of online animal rights campaigning. And finally, have you picked up the latest issue of Egg and Shooter yet? Issue 109 is full of wood pigeon decoying tips to help you keep the crops safe. Our very own Matt Manning shares his expertise and tests out some different brands of deke. Plus, as a trigger tuning masterclass, a review of the Remington Express and the chance to win Diana's Mauser-styled AM03 rifle. Pick up Egg and Shooter in Good News Agents or visit myfavouritemagazines.co.uk. That was the Egg and Show News. We've got a spring gun up for review this week and it's a very good one. The Wolver LGU Varmint, distributed in the UK by John Rothery Wholesale. Made in Germany, it has a recommended retail price of £450 and is widely regarded as one of the best out-of-the-box spring-powered air guns on the market. We'll see how it performs a bit later on, but let's start by taking a closer look at some of its features. Being the Varmint version, the test gun features a tough black synthetic stock. Synthetics usually offer some weight saving, but this gun still weighs over 4 kilos unscoped. At 107 centimetres, it's also quite long, but it is well balanced and the cleverly designed stock makes it very comfortable to shoot whether sitting, kneeling or standing. The forend is very long so there's plenty of reach for your leading hand and there are patches of very grippy stippling on either side. The ambidextrous stock is of the thumb hole design and I really like the configuration of the chunky pistol grip which really fills your hand. It's nice and steep and features the same grippy stippling as the forend. The cheek piece is plenty high enough to provide good alignment between eye and scope and I found its curved hog's back profile very comfortable. There's a soft rubber recoil pad on the butt plate. It provides plenty of cushioning, although it doesn't have a lot of work to do because this gun has an incredibly smooth firing cycle. The build quality looks excellent. The LGU has a reputation for being well engineered and I can't find any visible flaws in that department. The metalwork also looks pristine. The blue-black finish that's been applied has a deep luster and really suits the styling of the gun. There are no open sights, but the cylinder is equipped with dovetail rails for mounting a telescopic sight. Being an underlever, the LGU gives you the assurance of fixed barrel accuracy. The barrel actually features a tapered silencer. It incorporates what Walther terms as super silent technology, and I have to say that for such a slim silencer, it does a very effective job of stifling muzzle crack. Being a full power air gun churning out almost 11.5 foot pounds, the LGU does take a fair bit of strength to cock, but the cocking stroke is exceptionally smooth. You push your fingers behind the underlever to free it from its ball retainer, then draw it all the way down until you hear a positive click. The cocking stroke exposes the breech for direct loading. It looks a bit fiddly, but the cutaway is quite generous and you soon get a knack for thumbing pellets home. It's the sort of process that seems to become quicker and easier every time you do it. The gun has an anti-bear trap mechanism to ensure that your fingers don't come to any grief while loading up. Once you've loaded, it's just a matter of keeping the safety lever pressed in to disengage the mechanism and then pushing the underlever back up and into its retainer. There's a safety catch at the rear of the cylinder which engages automatically when the gun is cocked. It's well positioned and resettable. 
the gun is safe when it's in the rearward position and then you simply thumb it forwards when you're ready to shoot. I really like the trigger, which has a gently curved blade with a wide flat face which gives plenty of feel. It's a two-stage unit with adjustment for first stage travel and second stage weight. Straight out of the box, the first stage did feel quite long, but the second stage broke extremely crisply and with no creep at all. So that's the main features of the Walther LGU Varmint. Let's have a go at a target and I'll show you what it shoots like. Well, there's certainly no questioning this gun's performance in the accuracy stakes. We've got pretty calm conditions today and the 2.2 calibre test gun has just turned out that very impressive group at 25 metres. I've got to admit that I've used PCPs that couldn't rival that sort of accuracy. Apart from being accurate, the LGU is also a pleasure to shoot. It features a rotary piston mechanism that results in a very smooth firing cycle that also feels very fast. Combine that with this gun's weight and there really is barely any noticeable recoil. The Walther LGU Varmint really is a brilliant piece of kit. It may not be suited to smaller shooters, but it's a big gun that boasts big performance. It's so good, in fact, that it can hold its own against a PCP in the accuracy stakes, and that's without the hassle and expense of charging equipment. If you ever get a chance to try one, give it a go. You won't be disappointed. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine. Packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.